Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and this one is nicknamed Rana the Explorer. It's a red-green landfall deck featuring Valakut Exploration, the three mana rare enchantment with landfall, saying whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can exile the top card of our library, and we may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, potentially providing a nice bit of card advantage. And at the beginning of our end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, we put them into our graveyard and and exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. So exploration both works as a card draw engine, but it also eventually acts as a win condition by dealing a ton of damage to the opponent. Since we have a lot of ways of enabling landfall multiple times in the same turn, we've got creatures like Azusa and Ride of the Elysian Grove that let us play additional lands, which can help us enable landfall twice. We've got Fabled Passage, a fetch land, which will also help us enable landfall twice. We've got Ancient Green Warden, which also doubles all our landfall triggers, and we even have Ashaya, which turns our creatures into lands, so if we play a creature, those will also enable landfall. So we've got a ton of ways to enable landfall multiple times, and if we put those all together, we can have some crazy turns, where Exploration essentially exiles our entire deck, and we can deal a ton of damage to the opponent. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got two copies of Spikefield Hazard, which can deal one damage to any target. You can also play it as a land, Spikefield Cave. And we'll see a ton of these dual-faced cards in the deck, which are quite synergistic too, since we can always play them as lands to enable landfall, or play them as a spell if that's more convenient. And at 2 mana we've got some more removal with Thundering Rebuke, dealing 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker, perfect for taking out an opposing Omnath. And then of course we can't build a landfall deck without Lotus Cobra, the 2 mana 2-1 two snake, that whenever land enters the battlefield under our control adds 1 mana of any color. And again with all the ways we have of enabling landfall multiple times, we can see how Lotus Cobra can generate a ton of mana and help us cast all the cards we exile with Valakut Exploration. And then we also have the full play set of Tangled Florahedron, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one mana creature that taps for green mana, or we can play it as a land, so once again having the flexibility here is quite nice. Then at 3 mana, besides our 4 copies of Valakut Exploration, we already mentioned some of those extra land drop creatures, with Azusa letting us play 2 additional lands on each of our turns, although she is legendary, and then a Dryde of the Elysian Grove letting us play 1 additional land, and turning our lands into every basic land type as well. And then we also have some additional ramp with Cultivate, putting a basic land in play and one in our hand, so we can potentially play an extra land for the turn. And then we've got two copies of Rada, Heart of Keld, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary elf warrior, and as long as it's our turn, Rada has first strike, and we can look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands from the top of our library as well. And that also has a great synergy with Valakut Exploration, since we can sort of manipulate the top of our deck by playing a land and exiling the top card, or we can just use Rana instead to play lands of the top. And then for 6 mana, Rana gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands we control. And once we get to the late game and we get some crazy turns with Lotus Cobra generating a ton of mana, we can potentially activate Rana's ability multiple times in the same turn. And if we pump Rana enough, we can potentially also win the game by sacrificing Rana to a Kazul's Fury, so we can deal damage equal to Rana's power to any target, so that can just go straight upstairs to close out a game. Then at 4 mana we've got more ramp with Vastwood Surge, putting 2 basic lands on the battlefield tapped, and we can also kick it for 4 additional mana to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature we control. Then we have 2 copies of Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, a 5 mana star star legendary elemental, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and non-token creatures we control are forced lands in addition to their other types. So all our creatures all of a sudden also enable landfall, and Ashaya's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands plus the number of creatures we control, since all our creatures are lands as well, so Ashaya can also be a nice win condition. And then topping off our curve, we've got 3 copies of Ancient Green Warden, a 6 mana 5-7 mythic rare elemental with reach, saying we may play lands from our graveyard, which has great synergy with our Fabled Passage, which we can keep replaying over and over until we run out of basic lands to fetch up. And then if a land enters a battlefield and causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, also known as if we enable landfall anywhere, that ability triggers 
triggers an additional time, so of course it has great synergy with all our landfall cards. And then last but not least, there's Phil, and Phil just wants to chill and make some plant tokens. Phil's a bit of a stoner, so we get to make an 0-1 a green plant creature token for each basic land we control, and whenever we enable landfall we can put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target plant we control, so that can also double up as an additional win condition, and has some nice synergy with our vast switch surge as well. And then going over the mana base, we've got plenty of basic lands since we want a lot of basics for our various search effects like Cultivate, a Vastwood Search and Fabled Passage. So we've got 5 mountains and 9 forests, as well as the 4 red-green pathways, of course our 4 copies of Fabled Passage, and then 2 copies of Kazul's Fury, which I mentioned can be a nice win condition as well. And then we've got 4 copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can play as a land untapped at a cost of 3 life, or we can play it as a sorcery, dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers, and if X is 6 or more, the smashing deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead, so that can also be a nice way to spend all our extra mana from Lotus Cobra. And yeah, we've got plenty of other dual-faced cards here, as we mentioned, the Flora, Hedron and Hazard, which we can also play as lands, so roughly half of our deck is lands if we want to. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a bit of a slow hand, since we don't really have any ramp before turn 4. But this hand is powerful, and being on the play sort of makes up for the fact that it's a little slow. So I'll try it. And we're very likely to find a fourth land in time for us to cast Vastwood Surge, at least. Alright, I guess I'll play a Florahedron, even though it could get killed here. And it does get spiked here. Alright, we'll save the Fable Passage for next turn. Opponent on the red black. And a Timurit calls it that to fill the graveyard, so my opponent's probably playing with Croxa. Titan of Death's Hunger as well is my guess. We hit Azusa, perfect. So that lets me... I guess I can still fetch first here. And then I can play Azusa. Play Lance. And we hit another Fable Passage. Well, this is going pretty well. And then no reason to fetch now, unless I hit something else with Exploration I can cast for 3 mana. So I guess it's still worth it. Alright, just hit another lands. Opponent takes 2. And I can cast any of my 6 drops next turn. In the meantime, my opponent reveals a bunch more removal. And Heartless Act deals with Azusa, but we got our value, so can't complain. Alright, so we have some options. Can play Green Warden, can play Phil. Don't hate the idea of playing Phil here, and then Fable Passage can grow two plants. Hit another one. I'll just do it now in case they kill Phil at instant speed. Alright, sadly can't play the Cobra here. But next turn we can play Green Warden, start doubling our landfall triggers, and that's gonna be pretty epic. Especially if they can't kill Phil here. Magmatic Channeler. 2 mana 4-4, four, four, not bad. And Heartless Act sadly kills Phil. Alright, let's see if we can get some nice value here from our exploration. We get double the landfall triggers now. Although sadly, we're missing 
a way of uh, generating extra mana or letting us play extra lands, although next turn we can address that with the Dryad. And then I can attack with my 245 plant tokens. Opponent chumps one. And then whether I cast Hazard at my opponent or just let it go to my graveyard doesn't matter here. So I guess we'll just pass. Opponent falls to nine. And it may be a little confusing at first when you see all these cards still sitting here, but that's because we can replay them with the Green Warden. So they are in fact in our graveyard. Thirst kills a plant, opponent's down to one card, but he can still activate Channeler to maybe find some more action. Ooh, Lotus Cobra, that's a nice draw. And let me play another Green Warden. And now we get to go off. Should have a few basics left. But yeah, this is just game over. Can still play dry to let us play extra lands and we're just gonna win the game with Falakut Exploration. Don't need to do anything else. Spikefield Hazard, another Cobra. Guess we'll play the Cobra. Play another Exploration. I guess we'll just kill the Triton here. Slightly messed up my sequencing. I meant to still play a Dryad before the second Cobra, but I think we'll be just fine. Got 25 cards remaining, so not too afraid of decking. And then I'm not sure how much damage my opponent's gonna take here. Only three. So yeah, I definitely could have killed my opponent last turn if we had played Dryad a little bit sooner. But yeah, as you can see, it's kind of hard to tell at times which lands are in which zone because some of them are in your graveyard that you can replay with Green Warden, some of them are exiled with Valakut Exploration, and then you gotta keep track of how many lands you've already played for the turn. So it's it's a bit of a messy deck to play at times, I'll admit. But uh, yeah, we got there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, especially if Lotus Cobra survives, because we kind of need it to generate red mana. Alright, we found the red mana anyways. But of course still hoping the Cobra sticks around for a while. Opponent also on red-green, and Bonecrusher Giant's gonna stomp all over the snake. Alright, I guess we'll play Exploration for now, because I can't get any value from Harada yet. Opponent plays Symbiosis as a land, so looks like they might just be Gruul instead of the uh, Four Color Adventures deck. Rebuke can deal with Giants. Got a few ways we can play this. If I play Rat, I can maybe play Land of the Top. I think I just start by playing Hazard Tapped. Because I don't foresee needing to play it as a spell in this matchup. And then next turn I can play Rada into a lance and maybe play a two drop we find with exploration.
Alright, Fury could also come in handy later with Rada. For now, I'll just play Rada. Ooh, Azusa. Yeah, sadly can't play Azusa here, would have been great. So, I can uh, fetch with a Fabled Passage in the hopes of finding like a 2-drop I can play, like another Lotus Cobra. Otherwise, I might be better off holding it for next turn, since I wouldn't mind drawing the Shadow Skull Smashing. Primal Might takes out Rada. Mammoth gets in for four. And opponent adds Scavenging Ooze to the board. Alright, so let's start by just playing a forest, I think. Ooh, a Shia. Not a bad draw. Finds a Lotus Cobra, which I can't really play here. So I'll just pass. Yeah, we've been one mana short of getting value from our exploration two turns in a row, which feels kind of bad. Hopefully a Shia sticks around for a turn, although this looks like an Amber Cleave might be incoming. Just a Mammoth. So Amber Cleave, I guess they can't cast because they don't have double red yet. So this is probably like another stomp to take out a Shia after I block. I think I need a Shia to stick around for a turn here. So I'll just take five. Now the Ooze does have a lot of food here in the graveyard, since we put some creatures there with exploration. So Ooze now a 4-4. Four, four. Make that a 5-5. Five, five. Ooh, Lotus Cobra, excellent draw. It's gonna trigger Landfall and essentially enable itself to here. Florahedron the draw. So it can only play one more land for the turn. Florahedron also enables Landfall, so it also kind of pays for itself. Alzusa, nice one too. Feels like my opponent's holding a Bone Crusher Giant and finally decides to storm the Cobra. In response, we'll fetch with Fabled Passage to get one more mana from the Snake. Could also Kazul's Fury the Snake, but there's no great target for it. Play Azusa. So, I'm one mana short of casting, smashing for six here. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, we could attack with Ashaya, and if my opponent chum blocks with Ooze, we've got a superior board state, and if they take it, they're just dead to Kazul's Fury. So yeah, not bad, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the play. This hand is going to be too slow. No ramp, all our expensive cards. This is better. And then can probably get rid of one land since we've got Cultivate and I guess I might as well have kept the basic lands to make Phil a little bit better and keep the smashing in the deck. But that's all right. Opponent on the rogues. So I could play Rada. I think I would rather cultivate first, just develop my mana. Because Rada, they can easily just take out with a removal spell. And we wouldn't be able to get any value from Rada this turn since we've already played land. And then two forests is fine. All right. Could also play Smashing next turn, killing some creatures. We've got five cards in Graveyard. It's now six. Opponent passes. So, yeah, Smashing for three seems fine here. And we'll do two to the Enforcer in case they can mill me at instant speed. One to the Wind Robber. Lofty Denial to counter it. Hopefully Green Warden resolves. So they can now sacrifice Wind Robber. Enforcers a 3-2 Death Touch and Rogues a 5-3 Menace, so... Although I can get a bit of value from my Green Warden as soon as I play that. But for now I'll just play Rada. Can play this off the top. Put on sacrificing Wind Robber. I think I'm okay trading for the Enforcer here. Opponent keeps up 4 mana with 4 cards in hand, so they probably have some counter spells. So I don't think my Green Warden is resolving. So I guess we'll just play Surge. Develop our mana some more. And then hope to draw some more spells. Probably could have played that as a red source instead. Plenty of green already. Down to three we go. And I think we're just dead on board here. Yeah, sadly can't play my Florahedron as a creature out of the graveyard. And my opponent had a removal spell anyway here it looks like. Brazen Borrower bounces Green Warden and that's going to be 8 damage coming our way. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this sounds okay. Turn to Lotus Cobra. Hopefully survives, and then we can generate extra mana to ramp into a Shia. Facing a Serrated Scorpion, so some sort of Sacrifice deck. Archfiend's Vessel. Into a second Archfiend's Vessel. Okay. Take one. And right out the draw. So... I guess I don't mind... playing Rada. Right 
Although I won't be able to get any value from the top of my deck, so maybe I'm better off just playing Dryads. It's unclear whether I should play my land here or not. In case I need it for landfall next turn, so I can play a Shia at the very least. So I think I hold on to my Smashing. Enforcer, Sir Point on the Red Black. So they probably have claimed the Firstborn in their deck somewhere. They're attacking with Vessels, so they actively want it in the graveyard to maybe reanimate later. Um, I mean, I'll block the Scorpion. That's fine. Another Lotus Cobra. So if I go Lotus Cobra lands... I would get to make two mana plus two. That's still not enough to play a Shia here. So I think we just uh, play this as a lands. May green. Play a Shia. And then I can still play a Rada afterwards. And I haven't played a land from the extra land from Dryad yet. So that also works. Alright, so we're kind of going off here. Play Cobra and then next turn we'll have some Green Wardens we can play. And then we should also have some lands in the graveyard. Fabled Passage is perfect to get back with Ancient Green Warden. Can replay it twice thanks to Dryad of the Elysian Grove. And we're off to the races. 5-7 Reach also useful if they turn Vessel into a 5-5 Demon. So I'm liking my chances. Opponent passes. Play Green Warden. And my opponent concedes as four Lotus Cobra triggers hit the stack. Yeah, I do not blame them. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Eh, it's okay. Got Hazard in case we need to kill an opposing One Toughness creature. Florahedron to try and ramp into Ashaya. Take it from there. Opponent on a black deck. Do I need to keep Hazard? Yeah, I guess I'll keep it in hand for now. Because I can play Florahedron into Dryads and then I can still play Tapline afterwards. That's okay. Opponent on black green. Cultivates that are ramping. Alright, so it doesn't look like I'm gonna need Spikefield Hazard in the matchup. I could hang on to Kazul's Fury though, as that potentially combines nicely with a Shia. So, I'm not sure if I should play tapped here or not. I guess I still do. Another Cultivate. And a Volokut Exploration. Glad I held on to the Fabled Passage. So what am I doing here? I mean, I probably just play the Ancient Green Warden. And then next turn we can uh, kind of go crazy with landfall triggers if the Green Warden survives. And in the meantime, I get a bit of value from Fabled Passage in the graveyard.
And then no need to sacrifice this one quite yet. Seven mana. Questing beast, sure. And a fight spell to go with it, ram through, fair enough. And we'll take four. Ooh, double exploration. Don't mind if I do. Could also just cast a uh, Shadow Skull Smashing to kill a Questing Beast. But I don't mind getting a bit of value here. And then I probably fetch before playing the second exploration. Fabled Passage, perfect draw. And then I can still play Ashaya. Ancient Green Warden too. Wouldn't be able to play the Green Warden. And then I don't even have to sacrifice my Fabled Passage here. And we'll just pass. Nissa turns land into a 3 3. And Bloodchief's Thirst takes out a Shia. And down to 12 we go. Although, Smashing can deal with both Questing Beast and Nissa at the same time. So, do I need to cast that this turn? Yeah, it's probably a good idea. And then I can hang on to the Fabled Passage for next turn. Yeah, I need to cast this one for six. Without me, Zendikar is lost. And then next turn I can play Exploration, fetch with Passage and get some card advantage. Don't call Serpent for eight. All right. That doesn't mess around. I guess with uh, Dryad it doesn't matter which colors I tap. Can play an extra land. Not the most exciting draws. Probably fetch now with the Fabled Passage to try and find something a bit more powerful. Rebuke doesn't quite do it alongside Hazard. Do I want to play my Florahedron or just deal one more to the opponents? I guess deal one more to the opponents. And then, yeah. If they have a Questing Beast, that could be bad, but I guess I can chum block the Stone Coil to absorb a bit of Trample damage. But then we are top decking next turn. So, yeah, I'll just pass. Bone falls to eight. And a Great Henge. Pretty powerful draw. I'll take eight. Alright, land gives me two additional draws. And Azusa should keep this uh, party going. Cultivates, Fury, and my opponent explodes. Don't think they were necessarily dead on board, but yeah, we still have a few extra draws here between the Cultivate, the extra land drops. So we'll probably find a way to win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. 
can play the first Florahedron as a land. Turn to Lotus Cobra. Facing two basic islands into Cacophony, put it on a mill deck. Alright. Mill decks are definitely not a great matchup for us, just because we tend to draw so many cards. So we're kind of helping the opponents. The first tutelage, turn three. Yeah, that's scary. Do I still play Falakut Exploration here? Might not be the best idea. Yeah, I guess we'll just play Arata. Say goodbye to Ashaya. Second tutelage, oh boy. And we already see frantic inventory in the graveyard, so the next one they cast is gonna draw two cards which is going to translate into a lot of milled cards with the first tutelage. And the Ruin Crab. We happen to draw three copies of Valakut Exploration, which is probably the worst card in this particular matchup, so that's unfortunate. I guess I can kill the Crab at least with my Smashing. Yeah, Phil would have been a nice way to apply a lot of pressure here. But uh, sadly, only have the one copy. Third to first tutelage, put on discards another frantic inventory, so they must have a third copy in hand here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're just dead to that. Although they don't have a land to play it this turn. Um, so what am I doing here? Do I even want to play a land of the top? I mean, I kind of want an untapped land. Maybe play exploration first anyway. And then this can make green mana to let me play Florahedron. And then next turn I can maybe activate Rada to get in the last bit of damage we need. So we're down to 12. Yeah, no way we survived this. Into the story, draw 4. And that's gonna mill me for approximately my entire deck. Tutelage is still going. Sadly, don't have a fling in hand. Otherwise, it could have been possible for me to maybe like activate Rada, cast my Kazul's Fury, and kill the opponents in my upkeep before I take a draw from an empty library. But sadly, that's not the case. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lurus with a reasonable hand. Probably forced to fetch a forest on turn one if I want to play Florahedron on turn two. Although I could also see myself just playing the Florahedron. But I'm on the play, so I'm less likely to need to rebuke uh, one drop here. So let's just fetch forest. I'll definitely have to take a bit of damage from these Shatter Skull Smashings. Mm, 
Next turn I can play Exploration into a Tapped Smashing. Opponent on the red whites. Drenith Stinger. Alright, so opponent's on a cycling deck. I guess I don't hate to cultivate here. Develop my mana and then can maybe use smashing to kill multiple creatures at once. Their opponent doesn't have Flourishing Fox or another Stinger, just starts cycling. And Shock kills a Florahedron. Surprised they are playing the Shock, but I guess they need cheap removal for the Snake. Alright, so I've got some options. Probably just going to, let's see, could cast a Vasthood Surge, or I could go Exploration and then Rebuke the Stinger. Kazul's Fury I wouldn't be able to play. Opponent keeps cycling. So at this point we're most concerned about a potential Zenith Flare to burn us out. Fable Passage is a nice one. Do I fetch again? Can just smashing for two, although that feels a little weak. I can surge and hope to hit a two mana play. Yeah, I'll start there. Alright, can play the Florahedron. Sadly, we miss out on Phil. Not our Stinger, so we can kill both with the Smashing next turn. Do I even want to play the land? I guess I still do. Ooh, Ancient Green Warden. It's a bit too tempting to pass up, although I do risk taking a lot of burn from the Drenith Stingers. But if I don't play the Green Warden, like, what's my game plan here? Don't really have any win conditions. And then... I'll just have to pass. Could also see Zenith Flare just killing a Green Warden instead of going face, but that's usually not how the cycling deck operates. Opponent passes. Play the snake. Now it's going to be tricky to separate the Lands we can replay from the graveyard and the cards we exiled with exploration, but Azusa we can play. Fetch. And then I can still replay Fable Passage from the graveyard. That should be my last land drop. Alright, 
so... Can still play my Green Warden and then fetch with the Fabled Passages to make mana with Lotus Cobras and play another Exploration to find some more cards. And that Kazul's Fury is also looking pretty good. Play another Cobra before doing anything else. And yeah, my opponent concedes, so just to quickly go through the rest of our turn, we could play Cobra, still fetch with Fabled Passage to make a million mana with the three Cobras and all the extra landfall triggers from Green Warden. Then I could maybe use Smashing to get rid of the Stingers, attack, and then we still have all the cards exiled with Exploration that are going face. So assuming my opponent doesn't gain a ton of life off a potential Zenith Flare, they would have been dead. And even if they did have the Zenith Flare, it would not have been lethal, and we could have maybe still found other ways of dealing additional damage this turn, since we were going to draw a few extra cards here with Exploration, potentially even our entire deck, if our cards line up properly. So yeah, not bad. So yeah, this red-green landfall deck can definitely have some crazy turns, reminiscent of the Experimental Frenzy decks and Bolas Citadel decks, where you can sometimes play your entire deck in one turn, and that's uh, something that happens pretty regularly when going off with Valakut Exploration. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.